So my son and I are on our way to get my daughter from preschool. I dropped her off this morning, picking her up again today. It's the least I can do for my wife. I have two days at home and then I'm gone for quite a long stretch and she's gonna be pulling double duty. Not like this. Not like what? What? You mean dressed like that? Yeah. So I shouldn't put this in? You what, can do what you want. What are your suggestions for Mother's Day? Don't mess up. <laughs> No, 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 bad. It's a long commute right now because we moved and my daughter still goes to preschool on the other side of town. So until the end of June, basically, it's several days a week she's in school and it's a double commute each way. It's like two hours plus, so. I know, it's a lot of hours in the car. I'm very frequently asked about Altissimo, about the Altissimo range, how to practice it, etc. A couple of things that I wanna just mention about that. One, don't treat it like a range, like a separate range. Just treat your saxophone as one complete range. And you know, yes, the buttons only go up to high F, but eventually F sharp and G, as you start to add notes, make sure that you're practicing in that area in a, in a holistic way and you don't just sometimes try to start working on that register. And number two, it's really important to have the right resistance in your reeds. So I play fairly stiff reed to mouthpiece opening combination. I play a number nine hard rubber auto link with three and a half Rico Royal or now Daddario reeds. That allows me to have enough resistance up top that the reed doesn't collapse when I push a lot of air through it in the quote unquote altissimo. I don't know why I said quote unquote. I mean, in the altissimo range. The trade-off is I got to work a little harder down in the bottom register of their horn. It's not exactly as easy blowing and woofy down there. It's something I gotta work on. The resistance though is kind of funny because some of my vlogs are talking about the resistance as in the negative force uh, that we face when we're trying to do anything worthwhile. But in this case, I'm talking about a positive resistance between, so that when you're pushing air through the horn, there's enough pushing back at you that you can get a full strong sound. If the reed is too wimpy and all that, it'll just, like I said, it'll just collapse and it'll be thin. You'll be trying to bite and pinch. That's a general overview of what I'm looking for. Anyway, I was just thinking about this tonight because I, I had decided to sit down and just kind of play through the changes of body and soul as a as a way to get myself in the, in the zone for practicing and realizing that I was really, one of the things that I'm focusing on when I'm doing this, I'm going from bottom to top and top to the bottom of the horn. I'm, I'm trying to go through that progression and do a number of things. One, kind of check in with the progression, make sure you know I'm putting the changes in the right place. Number two, locate the chord scales and intervals, interesting intervals within those chord scales as I go. And number three, connect all that with melodic ideas so that I'm not just running up and down the scales and changes, but hopefully shaping those chord scales around an idea. I needed to get some shedding done, so that's tonight's vlog. <laughs> Mm-hmm.
Thank <laughs> you. 